Tonight, the King 5 investigators expose a grave injustice against Hanford workers after they get sick from toxic chemicals or radiation. We have found once a worker gets sick on the job, the federal government often fights them tooth and nail, systematically denying their claims for help. Susanna Frame is in Washington, D.C. tonight reporting on her continuing investigation, The Human Toll of Hanford's Dirty Secrets. We're in Washington, D.C. tonight to speak with our congressional leaders and experts about this unfair system. We've met one Hanford worker after another who doctors say got sick from their work at the site, yet the federal government takes a different approach to deny them over and over when they reach out for help. He was such a special person. Everybody loved him. Gary Sal was a family man, fisherman, and outgoing life of the party. His wife, Barb, says he was also one of those people who couldn't wait to get out the door for work. Right now, he would be your very best friend because within five minutes, you fell in love with him and he fell in love with you. It happened all the time. For 28 years, Gary Sal charged off to Hanford for work as a carpenter, working lots of jobs in what's called the tank farms. That's where the U.S. Department of Energy stores millions of gallons of cancer-causing nuclear byproducts in aging underground tanks, a toxic legacy from the bomb-making era, inherited by new generations to clean up. And as the waste breaks down in those tanks, they often release poisonous chemical vapors into the air, where workers, like carpenters, can inhale them. We thought we were safe. We, we thought, you know, they knew what they were doing. But they don't have a clue. About 10 years ago, Gary Sal started forgetting things, and his brain function got worse and worse. Within five years, he couldn't work, could barely speak, hallucinated, and operated on the level of a four-year-old. Doctors at Harborview diagnosed him with work-related toxic encephalopathy, a degenerative brain disorder. The cause, according to the experts, breathing in those chemicals at Hanford. You totally lose everything you ever had. Your memories, your mind, your thought process. Everything's gone. It's just a shell. Barb documented that suffering in a difficult to watch video taken in 2011. That once upbeat, athletic, skilled craftsman now in a hospital bed, trembling and frightened. Yes? On a feeding tube. I'm right here. Come on. I'm right here. No, no, you ain't coming around. No. Uh-uh. No? No. What's wrong? I don't want him in here. You don't want him in here? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to come in here. It got to where no one should ever see their loved one go through. What he went through, it got very, very bad. Originally, the federal officials whose job it is to help sick Hanford workers like Gary disagreed with his doctors. The Department of Energy's insurer wrote that not Hanford, but alcohol consumption or a B12 deficiency could be making him sick. Barb Sal battled for over a year before the feds admitted that yes, exposure to heavy metals and chemicals at the site damaged his brain. She says that's an example of the callous way Hanford workers are treated once they get sick. They get rid of you. You're no good anymore. We've used you to the extent we can. <laughs> they don't think that we're people out there, that we have families that care about us. and It's just go in, get the job done at all costs. We found this is standard protocol at Hanford, where the workers' compensation program isn't run by our state's l &I, but by the Department of Energy itself. They're self-insured. A government study in 2004 showed twice as many Hanford workers are denied claims compared with the state average. Undescribable what they've, what they've done to my family. They don't care. They don't even know we exist. But something's got to be done. The problems were too big. This is the man who says he'll do just that. Kevin Smith's been the top federal official at Hanford for a year and a half. He says he's just now hearing about these cases and pledges to find answers. If a worker is impacted, you know, uh, that came here and did national security work for the good of the nation in the Cold War, uh, they ought to be treated 
uh, as you know, uh, appropriately, and we'll chase that and see what the problem is uh, and where the, where we might have a disconnect. But people like Barb Sell want to know where were the managers before, and what about the other Washington, where it appears the Department of Energy has set up a system for the little guy to fail. Washington D.C. is like just turning their back on the fact that Hanford exists that it is as contaminated as it is, and that it is killing people. Working at Hanford did kill Gary Sal. He died three years ago at the age of 57. I miss everything about him. Everything. On a daily basis. I just want him back. Gary Sal's story is just one reason why the Hanford workers who've recently gotten sick are worried about their futures, and many of them have already submitted a claim to L&I. I'm holding in my hand the answer that one worker already got, and it says this claim is denied. In Washington, D.C., Susanna Frame, King 5.